In part two of our camper build, we showed you how we trimmed out the exterior door and the windows. In this episode, part three, we will show you how Bud went about building the actual door and the windows. The door and window stock were built from New Zealand pine that we purchased from our local Home Depot store. We found that for the money, it was the most knot free, straight and stable. We used three quarter inch pine to rip the rails and the styles for the windows. Next, we cut a decorative curve into the top rail of the window. Cleaned it up a bit with a belt sander. Cut it to length. Here Bud is cleaning up the tenons as the window will be put together with a mortise and tenon style construction. Mortise and tenon is where one end of a piece of wood will fit into a slot made for it in another piece of wood. This is how our rails, the top and bottom horizontal pieces, will fit into our styles the right and left vertical pieces. You can see here, as we pause the shot, that a groove was cut in this top rail to accept the window that will be inserted into it. Now, in order to route a decorative edge on the inside and outside edges of the window frames, Bud is constructing a quick makeshift router table. You can see here how he uses it to put on that decorative edge. A little bit of elbow grease with a light touch and Bud is able to cut the window from acrylic plastic. That's one frame down. Five more to go. And now, a much needed rest. And a scotch. What can I say? I was a little tired uh, and thirsty. Besides, we got work to do. Oh my goodness. frames were made out of five quarter inch stock. Here Bud is making a quick set of winding sticks. The purpose of these is to make sure that the stock you're using to make the styles for the door are straight and not twisted. If there's a twist in the door styles, the doors will be a little wonky and they won't close right. Okay, could you help us understand this a little better? Sure. Hello and welcome to my studio. And yes, I do teach music in a tent. His students love it. However, I have a problem. You see, right above me is a train set. By the way, at the filming of this video, we have 250 subscribers to our YouTube channel. 
I want to say thank you so much for supporting us. Yes, thank you so much. If you'd like to see more of these types of videos, please... Subscribe! Yes, subscribe! And hit the notification bell. Maybe leave a comment or a thumbs up. It would really help us greatly in the future to continue putting these videos together. And now on with the show. Eventually, this train will travel around the top of the tent anytime a student opens the door. Until that time, I have a problem. You see, the shelf that I'm storing the train on is a bit wonky. I can't get it to sit quite right, so it needs to be repaired. And I think that this would be a good opportunity to explain to you what I was doing with those two sticks and the black tape. Now that the shelf is down, you can see that it's bent. It has what we call a cup. This would cause it to not sit properly as a shelf. But there's also one other problem that I'm facing. So I'll take two sticks. This is just scrap lumber and I'll make a set of winding sticks. Now some people make these to heirloom quality and they pass them down from generation to generation. But I like to use just scrap lumber, put a little tape on the top edge of one, and that's just so I, it'll catch my eye better and I can see it better. Place one at each end of the shelf board and you can see how one edge of the board sits higher than the other. This means that this piece of wood has developed a twist. I can show you a little better with a small piece of scrap lumber. Here you can see that this piece of lumber has a cup in it. And now it also has a twist. This is the problem with my shelf. And the thing that helps me to identify this problem are those winding sticks. If the board was straight with no twist, the edges of the winding sticks would match up perfectly. So I simply grab another board that's much straighter. Cut it to length. Transfer the hardware. Install it. Oh, yeah. Much better. And problem solved. In choosing my material for the left door style or the lock style, and the right style or the hinge style, they both must be straight or the door will never close correctly. In the previous scene, you saw me making my winding sticks. Getting a sight on the board, finding out which boards were totally inappropriate, looking for the best, straightest pieces of wood I have to make the door styles. Now, once the styles are ripped to size, they need to be cut to the proper length. Here, Bud is creating a mark on the wood with a sharp knife. This cuts the fibers of the wood and allows for a very crisp saw cut. After the knife cut, he takes a very sharp chisel and begins to cut a groove against it. Now he has a trench that his saw blade can ride against as a guide for a very crisp and straight finished cut. Here he's using his chisel to clean up a joint called a rabbit on one of the door styles. 
You can see here as the scene freezes, the bud cut a trench or a channel, more commonly called a groove, down the length of the style. That little centerpiece will be removed and this creates the room for the window to be inserted into. Here you can see the door styles beginning to take shape. A little fine tuning with the old Stanley number four. Hey, I have an idea. How about if from now on, every time you see me use my old Stanley number four hand plane, just ring a bell like this. Now Bud is using a rip saw to rip out the rails to the door. A little cleanup. And now take it away, Bud, because I have absolutely no idea what's going on here. Sure. I want to do a raised panel effect on the bottoms of the doors. I like to make these with my hand planes. But here's a little trick. I use my quick made router table to get a very crisp and clean line on the panel. You can see here that I now have very clean lines that will be the edges of the raised panels. Now with some hand planing. And sanding. The panel begins to take shape. Now, if I fit this in between the bottom door rails, I get a very nice effect. Now, I install a hinge style and a lock style in the door opening and make sure that the middle rail follows the same line as the long trim under the window. Checking the curvature of the top rail, it's time to process it. First, I form the knife cut shoulder that Susan talked about earlier. Begin to cut the line to form a tenon. Same thing on the other side. You can see the tenons begin to take shape. A little clean up with my shoulder plane. And another clean up so I can lay the door out on the workbench. First a lock style then the hinge style. Next, making sure the panel and the rails fit perfectly. Looks great. Now the windows? Yep.
a final glue up. A test fit. Needs a bit of tuning. The doors have a rabbit or a groove at the bottom that needs a final cleanup. Now I fastened the doors together so that I could do a test fit as one whole door. What on earth is that? Well, next to my Stanley number no. four hand plane, that's my other favorite tool, my Stanley number no. 71 hand router. It took me a few years to find that thing. Here I'm using it to route out the door hinges. a little exterior paint. A little interior paint. Some weather stripping. And we're ready for the final install. Now after fine tuning all the windows to make sure that they fit perfectly, They're ready for some paint. Looks like rain. A light sanding between coats. But Preston, is that another scotch? Is that another one? That's the same shot. It's the same scotch. How about every time I see you drinking a scotch, I ring the bell?
and it's all coming together nicely. Bud Preston, another one? Bud Preston? Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part four. We're going to take our little camper out on its maiden voyage. Got to go by. Subscribe. All the best.